you will only have 15 minutes of freedom here in the UK. Welcome to Dystopia. What's happening in the UK, most particularly in Oxford and Cambridge, in relationship to the 15 minute cities? All our cities will probably end up now being broken up into precincts like uh, sci fi films that were made predicting a dystopian future. <laughs> What do I have in common with the likes of Katie Hopkins, Jordan Peterson, and Piers Corbin? I mean, not a lot other than the fact that we are all raging conspiracy theorists. If you thought we were done with lockdown conspiracy theories, then I need to introduce you to a conspiracy theory that has engrossed the aforementioned people and taken the globe by storm. Hi guys, it's Izzy and welcome back to my conspiracy series. Today we're going to be taking a very close look into the concept of 15 minute cities and how these might potentially affect the way we commute and travel forever. But first let me tell you flat out what is not a conspiracy theory about commuting. The fact that you can literally earn money while playing fun games on your phone whilst you travel on public transport. Thanks to today's video sponsor, the Skedaddle app, which is completely free on iPhone and Android, you can literally earn your bus or train fare back whilst you travel. Designed for the purpose of encouraging public transport and helping the environment, the Skedaddle app rewards you with money, that's right, real money, not points or vouchers just for playing fun and interactive games on your phone. I don't know about you, but when I'm traveling to work, I'm always listening to music with my headphones on and just playing apps on my phone anyway. Like, you may as well get paid for it. And I know what you're thinking, this sounds too good to be true, Izzy. Is there some sort of catch, like it's really hard to earn money or the games are really boring? Nope, it is literally super easy to earn money. You will see real money enter in your account every single commute you take. And on top of that, this is truly one of the most user-friendly designs I've ever seen from an app, especially from a free one. Any of the adverts in the app are carefully embedded into the game so you don't get any weird annoying pop-ups or any interruptions while you play. You actually receive a special sign-up bonus if you refer a friend, meaning that everyone can get into this little secret. Please see the link in the description below to download the Skedaddle app, it is completely free and I know you will love it as much as I do. But now back to the video because I'm really keen to hear what you think about this next conspiracy theory because I I'm really torn on whether it's a good idea or not, and I want to hear your opinion on this. The term 15 minute city has only been around since 2016, and it was coined by Colombian French urbanist Carlos Marino. The idea behind this is that cities should be built in a way in which everyone's daily needs are accessible within a circa 15 minutes radius from where they live. And Carlos's motivation behind designing this concept is that he wanted to help the climate by reducing traffic and pollution from driving about in cars. There are many cities around the world that have embraced this concept and have joined an organisation called C40. Did you know that before Covid the average person would spend over 400 days of their lifetime commuting, which sounds like a tremendous waste of time if you ask me. Think about how much time we would all save to do the important things in life like spending time with friends and family or working on our hobbies. If we had to spend less time commuting to work, the doctors or even the shops, like it would save so much time. In theory this sounds idyllic, right? So what is the conspiracy theory? I'm sure I'm not the first one to tell you this, but since the pandemic, there's been a lot of mistrust in governments around the world. Many people have started to question whether or not the motive behind building 15 minute cities is to generally help the everyday person like you or me, or whether governments are using this to hide a more sinister agenda. 15 minute cities are popping up left, right, centre around the globe, but there is talk to introduce it into the UK, starting with the city of Oxford. The Oxford 15 minute city was proposed back in December 2021 in the form of a LTN, which stands for Low Traffic Neighbourhood, and this is following the success of LTNs in cities such as London. These LTNs, or climate lockdowns, as they have been dubbed by conspiracy theorists, are aimed to help reduce traffic in residential areas. And they're doing this by introducing traffic filters in certain streets, which are then designed to encourage people to either use public transport instead of driving, or using their bikes, or even just getting out and walking. 
At the start of next year, Oxford is due to embark in a citywide trial in which they are going to split Oxford into six different precincts or to add further fuel to the flames in this conspiracy theory. They might even be called districts. I've done some digging and I must admit it took some digging to find the exact restrictions, which I'll get onto later. But the official plans for Oxford are as follows. Six traffic filters are set to be tested for a minimum of six months around Oxford city centre in 2024. This means that between 7am and 7pm, private cars will need a permit to get through certain roads which include St Cross Roads, Thames Street, Hythe Bridge Street and St Clements, seven days a week. Only vehicles which emit below a certain level of emissions will be allowed through the traffic filters into certain areas. Drivers using the filters that don't have a permit and are not exempt will be fined a £35 fee. Everyone who lives within the Oxford permit zone will be given up to 100 free passes to pass through every single year. And this means that they can have unlimited access a day through each of the zones in Oxford for up to 100 days a year and up to three permits will be permitted per household. Residents living outside the Oxford permit area but still within Oxfordshire will will be given 25 permits a year to drive through the traffic filters every single year. There are going to be exemptions to the rules, so a little bit of flexibility there, including for people who are carers, both professionally and non-professionally, blue badge holders, and also people that frequently have to go to the hospital. The council has also emphasised the fact that all areas of town are still going to be accessible via car, and that no areas are going to be blocked off. It just means that if you don't have a permit to get through, you'll have to use the ring road which goes around the city. Naturally, this restriction in itself has caused confusion fusion for the residents of Oxford because the whole point of introducing these traffic filters is to reduce traffic and to help the environment. But if you're just pushing all cars in the same direction around the ring road, then surely that's just going to congest certain areas of towns if everyone has to use those roads. And surely if people have to drive further around the city to get to certain points, surely that means more time spent in cars, hence more pollution? This theory went viral at the start of the year thanks to none other than Katie Hopkins who shared the following clip. You will only have 15 minutes of freedom here in the UK. So let me tell you the plan. The plan is in Oxford, and this has just been passed by the council, to divide the city here into a little squiggly city into six parts. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you will only have the freedom to operate in the part that you live. So if this is you, the idea is that everybody will live within 15 minutes of the things they need. 15 minutes of a school, 15 minutes of a doctor's, 15 minutes of a supermarket. And if you want to travel to the other zones in your city or maybe soon your town, you will have to go out an approved route. You will have to journey around the outside of the city in order to re-enter another section of the city. Katie isn't the only person who fears that LTNs might only be the very start of restrictions on people's freedom of movement. On the 18th of February 2023, anti-LTN protests were held in the city centre and it seems like peace was not obtained when protesters and police were definitely aggravating each other during these protests. Sorry mate, I am actually here. Oh, bro, don't oh. push me! Right. The people of Oxford have truly been fighting back, so the council has set up loads of plastic bollards throughout the city to obviously act as traffic filters, and the council has already had to spend a whopping £72,000 to replace these plastic bollards that keep getting knocked down by the people. The police estimated that around 2,000 people were involved in the protests this year. Pierce Corbyn, who is actually the brother of former Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn, he was a weatherman who is now turned conspiracy theorist and he is highly highly opposing these 15 minute cities. He is supporting the people of Oxford in their protests and he's saying that they were only introduced because they're all about controlling you, charging you money and promoting the climate con as he says. Piers Corbyn also famously does not believe in the idea of global warming and he says that there is no such thing as man-made climate change and that it's all been used as an excuse to justify all sorts of tyrannical moves and we must oppose them all.
The urban myth surrounding 15 minute cities is that the 2020 lockdown was just a practice run for what is yet to come and that slowly we're going to start to get more and more restrictions on our freedom of movement to the point where we might not even be able to leave the house without a heavy fine. The conspiracy theory takes an even darker turn when people have noticed that the World Economic Forum is seemingly pushing the agenda of a 15 minute city. The World Economic Forum does worry some members of the general public as they are a completely unelected board which possess a lot of power in the world, working with huge names such as the King of England. The concern arises about the World Economic Forum because in their agenda, which you can literally look up in Google, they talk about many phrases such as the Great Reset, which followed after the pandemic and basically gave the world a chance to restructure its organisation as we know it. People are speculating that the World Economic Forum's plan is to implement the New World Order in which there's just going to be one government at the top which rules everything in the world. So the chairman at the World Economic Forum is called Klaus Schwab and if you haven't already rabbit holed into this conspiracy theory do google at your own risk because honestly ever since I looked it up I literally can barely sleep at night. So the aim is basically that the government is going to own everything that you have so you don't have to worry about materialistic things, it's all sorted for you by the government and Klaus Schwab's motto is you will own nothing but be happy about it. And this is starting to reflect in the idea of 15 minute cities because people have already dubbed the slogan of the 15 minute city as you will go nowhere but be happy about it. Controversial figure and right-wing conservative Jordan Peterson has been throwing in further fuels to the flames in this conspiracy theory. He's using his platform to say he read the C40 documentation which is made up from a bunch of cities that have all signed up and agreed to be part of the 15 minute city movement. I think I'm going to have to circle back to a few of his points maybe in a Jordan Peterson deep dive video at some point. But yep, he sure is a conspiracy theorist that has a lot to say about this matter. There is a lot about his theories in the description below as well if you're interested in finding out a bit more. This theory is definitely an interesting watch, at least for context for the conspiracy theory. If you're thinking that conspiracy theorists have just run wild with their imagination and that there is no way that a government would have total control of where people can go, is it really that far-fetched to imagine if you think about it? Let's just remember that much more extreme versions of total government control have existed in our history. Let's just remember that things like the Berlin Wall have literally existed for like over 30 years or nearly 30 years in which the government literally told people that they were not allowed to leave their city under any circumstances and people literally risked their lives trying to cross the border of the city. And let's not forget that plans of implementing 15 minute cities are popping up left, right and centre like I've said before. Like for example, the construction of a brand new 15 minute city has already begun in Saudi Arabia where everyone is going to be able to live within walking distance of everything they need within their community. This city is going to be called The Line and it is essentially a digital and smart city. So instead of a regular city where houses and shops are placed on level with each other, this city is going to be completely built up to make the best use of space. This self-contained city in the middle of the desert is a planned 105 mile long horizontal city that would house more than 9 million people. It really is going to be the city of the future and that's going to be run on 100% renewable energy and use AI technology to police its citizens. I mean I think it's pretty cool that they are planning to make such a good use of space and have everything in such close proximity to each other so everything's accessible to everyone but I don't know with all the AI and cameras watching you literally all the time it might feel a little bit like Big Brother is watching. Now there are a lot of concerns behind the practicality of a 15 minute city as well as the social concerns that these could bring. The public is already starting to have questions like what if I'm restricted to a 15 minute radius where the area that I live in might not have the best source of education or maybe won't have the best job opportunities, will this restrict my future? I really think that regardless of what the true motive was behind introducing a 15 minute city, I think cities like Oxford have absolutely 
absolutely implemented it in the wrong way. The key reason for me why I think people are turning to conspiracy theories and having concerns about these trials is because the government and the council forgot one vital thing when implementing these restrictions, to put people and its citizens at the centre of these decisions. Even when I was just researching this video, I came across so much conflicting information about what the trials in Oxford are actually going to be, how many permits per year people are going to get, what the fines were going to be if they broke them. I can't even imagine how confusing it must have been for the people of Oxford when these rules and implementations came into play. Apparently there wasn't much notice or official notice about what these trials were actually going to look like. People were just sort of told about them through word of mouth and through flyers through the door. I am very intrigued if anyone from Oxford is watching this video. Do let me know your own experience in the comments below please because yeah I would love to know about what it was actually like in Oxford during these trials. And I do wonder if citizens were more involved in the implementation of these ideas if people would have been more trusting to the idea. From my research I could see that the council were offering the opportunity for its citizens to sit in in consultations about the LTNs but from what I could see people were sort of given the opportunity to have their say in these consultations in the form of oh where do you want these restrictions in place rather than do you actually want this in your neighbourhood and this reminds me a lot about an analogy that I saw about how politics works as a whole, in which citizens are just given the illusion of choice rather than an actual choice. And it works a little bit like how an adult might try and trick a toddler into making a decision that they think is theirs. Like for example, when adults want to get a toddler to drink a glass of milk, they could tell them, hey, do you want to drink this from the blue cup today? Or do you want to drink it from the red cup? That way the toddler goes and picks its favourite colour and thinks, oh yeah, now I've made the decision, rather than having the critical skills to think, hang on a minute, I don't want to drink the glass of milk anyway. If you give them the illusion of choice, they are more likely to buy into the idea. So again, this links back to the idea of an LTN. People are given the illusion of choice by these consultations, like, hey, where do you want these restrictions in place? You get a say, when in reality, they don't really get a say. So I wonder if this really is gonna be our future, and if we're gonna look back in the future on videos like this one and think, hey, what were we even worried about? Or are we gonna look back on videos like this and think, oh my God, why did we not say something sooner? Is that rain, Mr. Whiskers? Yeah, do you think so? Like, I think the concept of a 15 minute city isn't all that bad, but I do think switching up the entire city plan does need to involve people a little bit more and absolutely does need to be communicated from the top down better. Like, I'm trying to think how a 15 minute city could affect my own personal situation. For example, the town I live in has no big supermarket. Like, I feel like I'm doing D of E silver every single time I want to go to the shop and just get a pack of crisps. But like, my commute to work is 40 minutes alone and I have family that live all over the country and all over the world. Are you telling me that I'm gonna get fined every time I want to go to work or visit my family? Not sure if I'm bought onto the idea of that. Regardless of what the future of city planning looks like for you, whether we are gonna have the freedom in the future to commute to work or whether we are gonna have to hop on public transport and travel all around cities to get to where we want to. Great news for you! Regardless of the outcome, you are going to be able to download the Skedaddle app, thanks to today's sponsor, and earn some cash while you commute, you know, so at least there's a win-win situation. Don't forget to check Skedaddle out in the description below, and yeah, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are to the 15-minute city concept. Are there any pros and cons that you can think of that I might have missed in this video? Like always, leave your opinions and your own theories in the comments below, I will make sure to read them all, and also, yeah, let's have a discussion in the comments below, you guys know. That is what I do these videos for. Um, so thank you very, very much for watching. And yeah, I hope to catch you guys on the next video. Bye.